Welcome back to more Homeowner Association stories. In this video, a crazy HOA built a fence right through my property to landlock me. Without wasting any more time, let's dive right into the HOA stories. And the first one is titled Neighborhood HOA not allowing my permanently disabled friend to build a ramp to access their front door. So my friend is wheelchair bound indefinitely and when getting a contractor to come and make some accessibility modifications to their home, the HOA is blocking these modifications from happening. Like a simple wooden ramp with rails to enter their house through the front door. Obviously, this is morally effed up. Are they legally allowed to prevent a disabled person from making modifications for increasing accessibility to their own home? Common number one, the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Fair Housing Act, both federal laws require that providers of housing, including HOAs, make reasonable accommodations for Americans with disabilities. HOAs often get sued because they refuse to make reasonable accommodations and I have never heard of an HOA prevailing in such a case. Usually the HOAs get stuck with a very very large legal bill and very large penalties and possibly damages to the disabled person. A ramp for a wheelchair is invariably considered a reasonable accommodation. Your friend should contact a disability services organization that can refer him slash her to an attorney who practices in this area. The chances are very high that your friend will be able to get an attorney to take this case on a contingency basis because the potential payout is quite high. The HOA will have to pay your friend's legal fees by the way. Comment number two, as long as the ramp meets code, the HOA does not have a choice here. Your friend could submit plans to the HOA with a notice that pursuant to the Fair Housing Act, he'll be having a ramp installed to allow him to enter and exit his home. He is submitting these plans for commenting and if there's real justification, he is happy to discuss potential changes to the plans. It looks like your state has a fair housing office, your friend can file a complaint there to that office regarding the ramp and the need for it and the association's refusal. You could also engage an attorney. And now we got an update to the story that reads like this. So after getting blocked by the HOA, I helped my friend Josie contact our state fair's housing office. They connected us with Amber Martinez, an attorney who specializes in disability rights cases. She took one look at the situation and agreed to take the case on contingency, saying that she had handled dozens of similar HOA disputes. This is actually pretty straightforward, Amber explained during our first meeting. The Fair Housing Act is crystal clear about reasonable accommodations. A wheelchair ramp is about as reasonable as it gets. Josie Josie had been worried about the cost of legal representation, but Amber assured her, don't worry about my fees. When we win, and we will win, the HOA will be paying them. First, Amber helped Josie draft a formal letter to the HOA board. It included detailed architectural plans for the ramp, which we had already gotten from the contractor, citations of relevant FHA regulations, and a clear statement that Josie was requesting a reasonable accommodation under federal law. The letter gave them 14 days to respond and approve the modification, and the HOA board president, Karen Matthews, called Josie almost immediately and said, we have certain standards in this neighborhood, she said. A ramp would decrease property values. Maybe you should consider moving somewhere more suitable. Amber had prepared Josie for this kind of response. Josie recorded the call and replied exactly as coached. I am formally requesting a reasonable accommodation under the Fair Housing Act. Please provide any specific objections to the proposed plans and writing. Karen then hung up. A week later we got a letter from the HOA's lawyer claiming the ramp would violate their architectural guidelines and suggesting a backdoor entrance instead. Amber was almost gleeful when she read their response. They just made our case even stronger, she said. Forcing a disabled resident to use a back entrance when a front entrance modification is possible? That is textbook discrimination. She filed complaints with both the State Fair Housing Office and the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. She also prepared a federal lawsuit under the FHA and ADA, but held off filing it to give the administrative complaints a chance to work. The State Fair Housing Office moved fast. They scheduled a mediation session within three weeks. The HOA's lawyer showed up with Karen and two other board members. Amber brought an architect who specialized in accessibility modifications to explain how the ramp design actually exceeded safety requirements while maintaining aesthetic appeal. Karen started the mediation by arguing about property values again and the mediator, a former civil rights attorney, shut that down quickly and said, federal law prohibits housing discrimination based on disability, period. Property values are not a valid defense. The HOA's lawyer knew that they were in trouble he kept trying to whisper to Karen who kept interrupting with comments about neighborhood character and setting precedents. 
Amber laid out their options. You can approve these plans today or we can file a federal lawsuit tomorrow. Your choice. But I should mention that my last three cases like this ended with HOAs paying between 50,000 and 175,000 in damages and fees, plus being forced to approve the modifications anyway. The mediator took the HOA team into another room. We could hear Karen's voice getting louder several times and after about an hour, they came back. Their lawyer looked defeated. We will approve the plans, he said, but we want input on the paint color and railings. Amber smiled. That's reasonable. As long as any requested changes don't impact functionality or create unnecessary costs, we are happy to work with you on aesthetic details. The agreement was signed that afternoon. The HOA would approve the ramp plans within 48 hours with the paint and railings to match the house's existing trim. They also had to pay for Josie's architect consultation and Amber's fees. As we were leaving, Karen tried one last time. I hope you understand this sets a dangerous precedent. Josie, who had been quiet most of the meeting, finally spoke up. Yes, it does. It sets the precedent that disabled residents in this neighborhood have the same rights as everyone else. I would call that a good thing. The contractor started work the next week. The ramp was finished in three days. It looks great and you would hardly notice it unless you were looking for it. Several neighbors have actually complimented it and one elderly couple asked for the contractor's information because they've been having trouble with their front steps too. Amber tells us the HOA has suddenly become very cooperative with other accessibility requests. Apparently, they are even putting together new guidelines for approved accessibility modifications to streamline the process. And the best part of all of this, Josie no longer has to struggle getting in and out of her own home. I know some people might have just given up or tried to find another place to live, she told me. But this is not just about me. It's about making sure people know their rights and stand up to discrimination. So now the next person who needs a modification hopefully won't have to fight at all. The total cost to Josie, zero dollars. The HOA paid $12,000 in legal fees and mediation costs, plus had to cover the architect's consultation fee. They now also had to post a notice about reasonable accommodations on their website and include information about the Fair Housing Act in their quarterly newsletter for the next year. Ember says this was actually a relatively quick resolution. Some cases drag on much longer. The law was on our side from day one, she explained. They never had a leg to stand on. They just needed to learn that lesson the expensive way. And yeah, ripe stars, if you still enjoy the stories about HOAs getting dunked on, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video, since that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much, and the next one is titled HOA builds fence through my rural farm property to landlock me. So I've lived in South Africa for 10 years. I moved here because I wanted to start a new life. I was depressed in my old one and knew that changes were needed. I bought a small plot of land and decided to start a farm. I had grown up on a farm when I was younger, before my parents decided to move to the city, so I knew a thing or two, but most of it was learning as I go. I liked it that way and it felt like I was achieving something. There is not a whole lot near me other than a small village which hosts markets where I sell any excess products. I tried to live as self-sufficiently as possible but decided it was good to have some savings anyway just in case. And I'm glad because as it turns out I needed some money for the altercation which happened just a few months ago. For the past year there have been some construction works happening close to my land. This does not bother me, I don't own the land next to me and people are free to do what they like. It became very clear as these houses were built that the area was not just a usual housing location. The houses were all very uniform and even as people moved in they did not change much. I also spotted a few people walking around a lot, going over to the houses and having chats, giving them some flyers. Or they would be measuring their fences, height of their grass, and that is when I knew. It was an HOA neighborhood. Great, all those years ago when I was looking for land, one thing I ruled out was anything that was near an HOA area. There's usually not a whole lot of good that can come from HOA, so I could only hope I was wrong. Slowly but surely, these houses got closer and closer to my property, and again, if it is their land, they can do what I want but it did make me nervous. I've spent so long on my land working it to make it as beautiful as possible. My animals all have the highest quality of life and I ensure to feed them nothing but the personally harvested crops and bale I grow. They drink from troughs filled with crisp rainwater, being topped up by my filtered water when needed, my grass is lush, flowers are blooming, I love it. It's simply perfect and everything works exactly as it should. The water source was my main reason for purchasing the land by the way. There's also a river running adjacent to my land, part of which technically falls into the HOA property lines. It's ideal. A few of my new neighbors came around over that year just to drop in and say hello. 
They were all lovely and some of which I still see regularly for some afternoon card games. Anyway, I asked them about the HOA to which they all pulled a slight face. They make us cut our grass every two days, one of them groaned, and we can only have certain colors of flowers. What's up with that? They knocked on my door at 9am one day because my car was still there, I had not gone to work because my child was sick. They then had the nerve to judge me, claiming that this area is for hardworking people only, they are all a nightmare. Another rant, if you're wondering though, they are, that would be the HOA president and members. Each of my new neighbors have explained that the president is her worst and when she comes it's best to just nod your head and accept whatever it is she was moaning about. One thing that I think is important to mention is that my property is certainly not part of the HOA. It's still well beyond the boundaries of what is considered in the HOA catchment though. I also of course have no legal obligations to join the HOA, all of my deeds and documents confirm this. Now imagine my surprise when I woke up one morning and found a fence running right through my property and over to the other side where more houses were being built. I stared at the fence for ages, wondering if I was still dreaming or something. It wasn't sightly either, instead it was just a solid white plastic fence which completely ruined my aesthetics. It cut me off from my water, effectively landlocking me, as well as some of my crops and fields. I walked back inside and slowly got ready for the day. I knew I would have to go and confront someone, but I was dreading it. I don't really like drama, I don't like arguments, but I also don't like people who think they can just walk over someone else. So then I walked down to the HOA office saying hello to some people as I passed. At least the general neighbors were lovely. I knocked on and waited and about 10 minutes later a woman came to the door. I had recognized her from before, she was always walking around annoying people. This was the HOA president. Hello, can I help you? She asked, wrapping her fingers on the doorframe. Yes, you've built a fence right through my property. I stated, suddenly realizing that I had no idea how to start off this conversation. Yep, she replied, shrugging her shoulders. Why? The woman groaned and rolled her eyes. That fence is part of the new development boundary. I guess your land was accidentally included. The woman then had the nerve to smirk and say, You have not been to any of the meetings, why is that? Because I'm not part of this HOA. Ah, well, no worries, I guess you will just have to join. The woman shrugged. Yeah, no. What do you mean no? I'm not joining the HOA. I bought my property well before you got here and will not be changing anything about it just to meet whatever weird rules you have built. The woman looked flustered, clearly she had never ever been shut down before. Well the only way for you to have that fence removed is if you join. End of story. I will never join and you will remove that fence, it's on my property and you had no right to place it there. The woman smirked and said, we will see. She then proceeded to slam the door in my face and walk inside. I was seething honestly, I had not felt this horribly angry emotion in years. This was the exact reason that I wanted to get away from my old life and start a peaceful one just for the sake of it, while I mulled over what to do, I had a read through the rules that would be enforced upon me if I were to join this HOA. As I'm sure you've already guessed, owning a farm is near impossible with these rules. So here are the main ones which confirmed that I would not be joining the HOA. Number one, pets and animals are not to exceed the number of persons on the property and well, I have a lot of animals. Number two, food is only to be grown in contained pots that can be transferred inside. Again, I have a lot of crops. Number three, grass should be kept at one centimeter height. My grass is and will always remain wild. There were more, but I think the first two are the main ones. I would basically be signing my life away if I joined. I would never be able to have a farm again over the next weeks while I was still thinking of what to do about this damn fence, things got worse. I got numerous horrible and threatening letters in the post which they stupidly signed so I held on to them for later use. A small protest was even organized at the edge of my property calling me an animal murderer, I don't even kill my animals, I'm a vegetarian and all other sorts of stuff. I was still not going to succumb to what she wanted and instead decided to contact a lawyer to see what could be done. This is where those savings came in handy. It will be expensive to go up against an HOA, it could also take a rather long time. The lawyer warned me. That's okay, we can at least start doing something. So we did and my lawyer began compiling as much evidence as he could, working away in the background while I decided to take some matters into my own hands. Although I had not joined the HOA, I decided I could mess around with some of their rules a bit and see how they would really like it if I were to join the HOA. I started decorating the portion of my land that they had 
claimed with all sorts of banners and signs that the HOA had produced and used. I picked up some of the protest ones, stuck those in the ground, went around to the office, took a load of marketing signs and pretty much anything that would make the land look ugly. It worked and it was an awful eyesore and the posters I had stuck to the fence made things look all the more abysmal. I also painted parts of the fence, again badly, with one of the few shades the HOA allows. Next I of course had to ensure I did all of my noisy activities right at the threshold of the noise restrictions for the HOA, so the moment it hit 7.30 I would wake all my animals up and take my sweet time feeding them. Then at times where it was the most annoying for the HOA overlords but still permitted, I would start up my tractor to annoy the hell out of these ridiculous busybodies. My manure heap was also cut off from me, so of course I had to start a new one right next to the fence. It drove everyone mad, but thankfully they were all on my side. They could see what I was doing and decided that it would be worth it to see this HOA have a taste of their own medicine. We had all even devised a plan where the residents would begin spamming the HOA with complaints of the farm to really drive it home, but more importantly they ensured to work the complaints as though they were more so complaining about the HOA. What are you doing? The president demanded, standing outside of my property a day later. What do you mean? I asked with a smile. She lifted what looked to be 100 letters. People are complaining about your farm. They never have before and only since you started meddling with it. I shrugged my shoulders, she clenched her fists. Listen, all I asked was for you to join the HOA. Yes, I'm aware, but joining would mean practically getting rid of my farm. Yes, do that then. Nobody wants your stupid farm here. It's ugly and loud. You're going to have one week to sort that out. Is that a threat? My lawyer but in, coming out of my house where he had been filing paperwork. You're going to have one week to remove this fence or we will take this whole HOA to court. Oh yeah, for what? She laughed. My lawyer pulled a large stack of papers out of his bag. Here, you can keep this copy. It's copies of all the threatening letters you've sent, signed by yourself. As well as copies of the property deeds showing that you certainly don't have a right to plonk a fence right down the middle. Oh, and by the way, at the bottom is just a little something I found online. Your criminal history. Wouldn't want that leaked now, would you? I could not help the smirk that erupted onto my face. That was so fun to watch. Her face paled and it ended up only being a day before the fence was removed and the HOA released a public statement of apology. Even better, the president resigned quickly after making way to a much more understanding leadership who I ended up making a deal with to supply some fresh fruit and vegetables to the community school. I'm glad I'm back to living my nice peaceful life and I quite like having so many new neighbors. It was getting a tad lonely. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. To make this story a little easier to read, I broke it up into kind of two parts. The first being the backstory and then what happened. The second part being the legal stuff that happened later. So part one, I live in a pretty small town in South America and I run the general store that has been in my family for a hundred years. I sell a little bit of everything but not too much of one thing. A very old school type of shop that I don't think exists in a lot of places anymore. It might be outdated but people still shop here and I don't like the idea of changing something if it's not broken. I kind of like the idea that it's the same premise after all this time. The biggest draw for people to my store is that it is right next to a neighborhood of homes. The only store in walking distance so when they need a couple things my store is the place that they like to go to. I have even special ordered items that I know they like since they will sell easily. I have a good rapport with the people living here, an HOA was created for the neighborhood and I knew about it mainly because of people coming to the store and complaining to each other while I overheard things. The HOA people seemed like jerks that only wanted to just get as much money from people as possible in any way they could. Now HOA is not exactly the right term for these people because they were more like a gang posing as an HOA. They used intimidation tactics, took the money for themselves and were just not a legitimate organization. They were thugs but they called themselves an HOA so I will just go with that term for this story. I was more than just close to the neighborhood and it turned out that my store was technically part of it. I just never considered it to be. And well, this HOA did not seem to care that I was not a home and came in one day to my store to try and sell me on giving them money to join the HOA. Telling me that it would be good for me and all of that crap. 
Me, I'm not interested. Besides, this is a business, not a home. HOA, we can still offer you protection. Me, there has never been an issue before that I need protection from. I wanted to be firm in saying no without escalating a situation, a skill that a lifetime of customer service has ingrained into my brain. HOA, the thing is that you are part of the neighborhood, so you need to pay us your dues. It's not really a negotiation. Me, I don't need to join. I was here long before you and I have a choice. I am choosing to not join. HOA, I would just hate to see something happen to this store that everybody likes. It would not cost you that much and we would be able to make sure that it stays safe and sound. Me, like I said before, I'm not interested in joining an HOA when the place is not even a home. I know that the store is in the neighborhood and that's why you came. But I told you no, so you can either go now or buy something. I lost patience very quickly with these guys and did not appreciate the subtle threats. I might have spent my whole life in a small town behind a counter, but I know that when a group is trying to offer protection, it means from them. My hope was that it was an empty threat and they would move on or try again to get me to join. What I did not think would happen was five guys coming into the store and basically raiding it. A little context here is that the HOA had these guys they called officers, but they were basically just enforcers and bullies. Me not wanting to join and giving them money had them so angry that they sent these officers to raid my store. It was horrible and they started going around the entire store and destroying everything. Everything. Products, shelves, the security cameras, etc. It was chaos as they loudly went through the place like a SWAT team, leaving the entire place in pieces. I'll admit that I hid under the counter because I did not want my head to be one of the things that got smashed in by these crazy guys. Once there was nothing left to break, I was just sitting there in shock. It was the one day I was glad that no customer was in my shop. I get chills thinking about what could have happened to an innocent person caught in the crossfire. I walked around the store to see that my entire stock was unsellable, even the back storeroom had been broken into, so I had nothing to sell until my deliveries in another week. What I don't know is how they managed to break the safe open and take all of the money inside of it. I called the police when I knew things were safe and they came and looked over all the damage. I told them that I was sure the HOA had sent the guys to destroy the place after I refused to join them. I wanted them arrested, but it was not gonna be that easy. Police, I'm sure that you are right in guessing what happened. The problem is that we cannot make an arrest based on that. If you had any proof of faces on the video, we could investigate them on that. Me, they destroyed the cameras and footage in the back. They were sorry they couldn't do anything but make a report, but I knew it was not their fault. They cannot just arrest people based on suspicion. I spent weeks moping around and not knowing what to do before I got myself back up and said that if the police couldn't do anything about the HOA, then I was gonna do it myself. Nothing violent or crazy, I was just gonna get a lawyer, get myself some evidence and then sue them into oblivion. Part 2. It was harder to get a lawyer than you might think. People did not want to go against an HOA like this because who knows what could happen to them. I found a lawyer after over a month of searching that was willing to help me. While I had no evidence showing my store being destroyed, I did have the old footage from when they came to not so subtly threaten me. That would be useful for a lawsuit against them, it being a bad HOA, I could try and find people willing to help me go against them and testify that they were pressured into giving money and that they did not see anything being used for the community. People were scared, but I had loyal customers that saw what they did as going too far. Plus, they were sick of giving more and more money to the HOA whenever they deemed it needed. My lawyer also filed some kind of form that would have the HOA guys financial stuck into to try and show that they were not doing the right things with taxes. Sorry for not being able to give more details, my brain was kind of a mess over this whole thing. I was running out of money and closing the store fully was on the table. I was staying open, but it was a daily struggle of if I could survive at staying open and worry if those guys would come back for me. We were waiting on a judge to decide if the video I did have was enough evidence to search the HOA and see if they could find any type of proof that the officers existed and that they were doing illegal activities. The video plus the statements from the others saying that they were threatened was sufficient and the HOA was now the ones being raided instead. They found money and weapons as well as the officers' uniforms. It was not legal to have things saying officers or police if they were not actually those types of people. 
Again, it was not enough to arrest them for destroying my store, but it was something I could use in the bigger lawsuit against this HOA. It was all about collecting enough so it could ruin their credibility. Finally, the court date came and we went in with all of our stuff showing that they were scum. The documents also came in to show that the HOA was stealing money and not reporting everything to the government. They were being separately investigated for that which made me happy. Judge, did you or anybody in your organization and sent these officers to OP's store with the purpose of destroying it or obtaining money from him? HOA? No, it was a tragic accident that occurred to him. Sadly, we couldn't help since he was not a member. My lawyer objected to that comment since he was just trying to be cocky and it was not answering the question of the judge. Judge, a raid of your building showed weapons and uniforms that matched the description of the people that destroyed the store. OP, can you confirm this is what the men were wearing? Me, yes, they were wearing those exact uniforms. It went on for a while with them showing other witness statements of seeing HOA men wearing those uniforms. Mixed with all of the other things we found against them, there was a chance of the men who did this actually going to jail. One must have realized they were screwed and in a night between court dates broke down and admitted to being in my store and destroying it. He blabbed to the judge who was with him and more importantly who ordered it. He was the sole person not going to jail and instead just getting a hefty probation. The rest were going to prison and the HOA was being shut down. Money was being attempted to be returned to all the homeowners, but most of it was spent already. I got a little bit of money back for my store, but I cannot sue them for what they don't have. The government took most of it and the rest of us were just out of luck. I still consider it a good ending since the HOA was gone and I did not need to worry about my store being destroyed again. I would slowly be able to work back up and save money again, I still had my customers after all. And yeah guys, with this we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss any of my daily uploads and also check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on Spotify, Amazon, Audible and other podcast platforms. You will often find exclusive episodes and early access to new content. Furthermore, please check out my Patreon by going to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or my YouTube membership program for even more exclusive stories. Thank you so much and I will see you again tomorrow.